Hello everybody and welcome to the channel. This is the third episode of the series where I review no taking apps on the tablet 6. In this one I'm going to be reviewing the app called Nebo, which was a recommendation that one of you made in the comment section. So if you have any other no taking apps that you consider I should review, you can also leave it down below in the comments. Okay, so first of all, let me give you some heads up because unlike OneNote, which you can use completely for free, or even Squid, which you can use partially without paying, this is not a free app. If you want to use Nebo, you're going to have to pay for the app. And most important than paying, you're going to need a device with pen functionality to use it. And I want to be clear about this. If you're planning on buying Nebo to use it on different devices, make sure that you can download the app in all of them before buying it. And be aware that once the app is downloaded, you are going to need a pen or a stylus to write in the app. Otherwise, you can only visualize your notes. Now, I gotta say that I have a love-hate relationship with this app. And that's mainly because prior to buying it, I never saw a tutorial or a review about it. So I was discovering many things on my own. And to be honest, at first, I thought I had thrown away my money. But let me make you a quick summary of what I've learned during these weeks of testing. As always, I will start with the organization method of the app. In here, you can create collections which store all of your notebooks, in where you create as many pages as you want. To each notebook, you can assign a color, name, a collection where it's going to be stored, and the language that you're going to be using. This is important because the key feature about Nebo is its handwriting recognition. So once you enter the page you're going to be working on, everything you write on the infinite canvas, you will be able to preview its transformation to text. From the time I've been using the app, I have nothing but compliments about this feature. It recognizes almost perfectly my handwriting. I have seen some minor confusions once in a while, but you can fix them so that the AI takes a better decision next time. The thing that amazed me the most about this is that it recognized my arrows. I always tend to enumerate with arrows, and it was incredible to see that the app can recognize not only letters, but also figures and transform them into text which you can combine with your regular input, so you can have a mixture of both in your notes. There's a set of features that Nebo offers which are unique to this app. These features are gestures with the pen. The most basic one is to double tap your ink input to convert it to text. You can erase a word or a letter by crossing it out, so instead of changing your tool to the eraser, you can simply draw a line in front of what you want to erase. However, this eliminates the mapping of the eraser to the button of the S Pen. In fact, nothing really happens when you press it. I do consider that it is more natural to erase with this gesture, but I sometimes miss erasing the other way probably because I'm too used to it. But this is not the only editing gesture. You can also underline a word to turn it bold. If you underline a whole paragraph or sentence one time, you can turn your text into a subtitle. And if you underline it twice, you make it a title. If you put anything inside of a circle or a rectangle, it highlights whenever you convert the ink to text. And here I want to make a small pause to mention some things that I've noticed while using the app. Because each of these gestures are presented to you individually. But I was playing around with some of them and I found out that you cannot highlight a header. So you either highlight it or make it a header, but not both. And talking about highlighting, I'm a little bothered that you can only highlight text. And I get it because that's the main focus of the app. But when I'm using it, I always feel like there's something missing. Moving on, you can also separate or join your ink input. It can be separating a word into two words or separating a single paragraph into two paragraphs by drawing a straight line downwards. This can obviously go the other way and you can join two paragraphs into one and make two words into a single one by drawing a straight line upwards. Regarding other mentionable features, the eraser tool deletes letters, not the entire stroke. 
you cannot zoom in or out which is unfortunate as well as not being able to choose the background style color or size of the page you're working on and one thing that really bugs me is that if you're brainstorming all over the place and you decide to rotate your device for any reason all of your notes are reaccommodated so they don't stay where you want to when writing you don't get pressure sensitivity but you can choose from six pen sizes which go from 0.15 to 1 and there's a wide variety of colors you can choose from which you can also add to your toolboard for more convenience also if you underline a text with a different color than the original one the text changes to the color of the line you just drew you must write inside of the lines anything bigger or outside the boundaries of the lines is automatically erased and due to the nature of the app the selection tool is interesting to say the least if you use it on the regular canvas you can only copy the text delete it make it bold or change its color now if you were paying attention i said regular canvas and here is where the app gets even more interesting to the canvas you can add four different objects the first one and the most common one pictures if you want to add any images from your gallery or camera you can do so with no problems with this tool you can also add a sketch and here is where the things start changing because with this your ideas don't get reaccommodated and this place is basically as its own name says a piece of your notes where you can sketch and it's interesting because in here the eraser becomes what it's usually called in other apps as a true eraser deleting exactly where it's supposed to as you can imagine in here you don't get the previous gestures for erasing or breaking and joining or converting your ink to text this is also the place where the selection tool is the most accurate. You get exactly what you select and you can move it wherever you want as long as it's inside of the sketch box. You can also add a diagram section where your figures are recognized and turned into diagram figures filled with a sky blue background, which I think is not customizable, but you can change the outline of the figure. Now, with this object, you still get all of the previous gestures, and that's because your input is still being recognized and can be turned to text. Nothing much to say about this object. The selection tool grabs the entire paragraph, and the eraser goes back to deleting letters. If you double tap, you convert your ink into text, and the figures you've drawn actually turn into figures and not just drawings. If you wish to add more text to the figure after it has been transformed, it actually adjusts the spacing so that everything fits properly. The final object that you can add to your notes is called Math. Now, as I said before, this was my first experience with the app. So when I saw Math, the first thing that I did was to try a simple equation, x squared minus 16. And I was expecting this to solve the equation, but it didn't. I checked the settings and it said that the solver was enabled. I even tried adding an equal symbol and all I got was a question mark. And I was like, mm, I'm the one asking for the answers here, you know? But after seeing the video that Nevo has on their page, I saw that the example they used is from a multiplication. And additional to that, they showcase how you can write integrals, equations, and all of that. But I guess it doesn't solve anything that's not an addition, subtraction, multiplication, or division. In here, you still conserve the erase gesture and the double tap to convert from ink to text, which is what triggers the math solver. Finally, you can add one more thing to your notes, which is a draft section. In here, you can take your notes as you would in any other note-taking app. Still no highlighter though. But what makes this interesting is that if you select anything from here, you can decide in which type of object you want to copy it. So for example, if I make a small diagram in here, I can copy it as a diagram and then paste it in my notes specifically as an object diagram. So it gets all of the features that the diagrams get. In here, the selection tool is pretty good and you can resize everything you write. As you can imagine, you lose all of the gestures and your input is not being converted into text. Apart from that, you can look for a specific words inside of your notes, both inside and outside of your page. And if you look for it outside of the page, you can actually see how many times it appears in every page of your notebook. You can sync your notes on multiple devices through Dropbox or Google Drive. And from what I've tested, it's 
pretty good. One of the latest features they've added are dictionaries. Once you create your own dictionary, you can add certain words to make the text recognition work better. If you want to share your notebook, you can do so by exporting your notes as a PDF, text, Word document, or even as an HTML. To me, it's pretty impressive being able to export your notes as an HTML. However, it's kind of funny to me that the most common one, exporting your notes as a PDF, it's the one that I'm having the most trouble with. But I know it's not only me, because I saw someone on the Play Store make a review that complained about the same error. So hopefully they can fix this issue very soon. On the other hand, if you decide to publish your notes, you're going to get a link to a web page where that specific note is stored. You can set this link to be either private or public. If you set it to public, everyone with the link can access it. Otherwise, you have to create a list of people who can read your notes and they will have to sign in in the web page if they want to see them. That's basically everything I was able to obtain by using the app this past week or so. I hope it was useful if any of you are planning on buying the app. If you want my thoughts about it, I think it has many interesting and unique features, but it's not personally what I'm looking for in a note-taking app. Sometimes I feel like it's too complex with all the objects and sections. I prefer a more simpler approach. And I also don't like the fact that there is no customization to your notes, like the background color or the style and size of the page. But if you don't mind those details, plus paying almost $11 for the app, I wouldn't stop you from giving it a try. And just as a final comment from what I've read, the iPad version of the app is similar to Squid in the way that the app as itself is free and you can upgrade it if you pay for the premium tools. But because there's no Android equivalent, Nebo has a web page where you can try it for yourself some of the features that the app offers. I'm going to be leaving the link to the web page in the description so that any of you can try them out. Remember to leave a like if you enjoyed the video and subscribe for future content. This has been a regular teenager. Take care. Peace.